Hey guys, welcome to a new video. This week we're gonna be creating the blink ability from Overwatch, as you probably already know from the title of this, of this video. <laughs> this guy keeps missing. What a piece of oh! <laughs> Like in all my tutorials, I set up the scene first with a plane and a checker material as well as a first person controller. Let me hit play so you can see that there isn't anything special about this character controller. Awesome. First things first, we will create a new particle system that will be the trail we leave behind. Name it trail and under its settings, set the duration and lifetime to 1. Start speed and start size to 0. Under emission settings, remove rate over time and add a burst of zero particles. Scroll down and enable trails. Check world space and uncheck size effects width. For the width over trail, I will lower it to 0.5 then enable a curve and select one going down. Now if we move it around we can see, uh, okay whoops. Go up here real quick and set a rate over time to 2. Now if you move it, you can see they are actually spawning in different locations and not on the center. Go to shape settings and lower its radius to the minimum possible so that they always spawn at the center. Move it around and you can see it's looking very much okay now. Go down to trail settings and for the color over lifetime change it to a gradient. For the last alpha keyframe, lower it to zero so that it fades out. On the render settings, you can assign your trail material here so that it doesn't look pink. I'm going to be using Unity's default line material. It looks better now. Let me go up here and change the rate to 1 instead of 2. And it should look way better now. Change its rate over time back to zero and under burst, set it to 1. Back up here, uncheck, play on awake as well as looping and we're all done with it. All we gotta do now is make this particle system a child of our character controller. I'm actually going to give my character controller a rigid body real quick. You don't need this for the script to work, I just want the controller to be affected by physics for when I blink upwards. Add a new C-sharp script called blink script and let's begin coding. We'll begin with our variables, an integer that will be the amount of times we can use blink, a bunch of floats, one for cooldown, the distance we can blink, speed, destination multiplayer, and camera height. I will explain those last two floats in a second. We need to display how many uses we have left, so we'll use a UI text for that. We need a reference to the camera so that we can shoot on the right direction a layer mask so that we can detect if we have hit a wall. Now for hidden variables we'll have an int that will hold the maximum amount of uses we can have, a float timer for the cooldown, a boolean to control our different states, a vector 3 to hold the destination and lastly the trial particle system we previously created. Under start, we assign the trial variable by finding it by its name and getting the right component. Set the mac uses to be the uses variable we set in the inspector and set the timer accordingly. We also need to update our text UI to show the right amount of uses. Under update, we check if we have press mouse 0, which is left mouse click. We call a new function, um, let's name it blink, just for the sake of consistency. Now go down here and create that function real quick. Back up on update, we will check if our uses are smaller than the max uses, then that means we have to do our cooldown timer calculations. So check if cooldown timer is bigger than zero, we lower using time that delta time. Else, we add a use and reset the timer as well as update your UI. Oh, and by the way, you can have the code arranged like this too. I just like to use as little lines as I possibly can. I think it looks better this way. Okay, so if we are blinking, we need to move the character. We will begin by storing the distance between the destination and the character in a temporary variable so that we can check if we are not at the destination. In here, move the character to the destination using our speed variable we can assign in the inspector. If we have reached our destination, then we are not blinking anymore. 
Awesome. Now for the blink function, we will begin by checking if the uses variable is higher than zero and if it is, then we lower it, its uses by one. Set the UI text and play the trail particle system. We need to assign the destination variable. For that, we do a raycast starting at the position of the camera forward using our distance variable. If we hit something, then we assign the destination to be the hit point multiplied by our destination multiplier. What this variable does is basically avoids blinking into whatever the raycast hit. So if we set it to be 1, it will blink into it. Set it to 0, it won't move at all. But if you set it to a value like 0.95, then it will stop right before it enters the wall. You can set this value to whatever works best for you. Now we just do a quick debug draw line to visualize the blink path on our scene. You don't have to do this line of code, I just want to show you the pathing. If this raycast does not hit anything, then we just calculate the destination using the camera position, or distance and destination multiplier variables. I'm going to do a ray to visualize this as well. Last thing we do is add the camera height value to the destination.y so that we don't clip through the ground. I will show you what I mean in game when we're testing. Set blinking to true, hit save, then go back to Unity. Back here you can see that we have all these values to set up. For uses in Overwatch the spell has 3 but for testing purposes I'll do 5. Cooldown to 2 seconds, travel distance to 10 units and speed. Mm, this value needs to be pretty high because blink moves real quick so I will do something like 100. Destination multiplier to 0.9. For camera height, I can select my camera real quick and see the Y value of the transform. However, this is in local space, so if I unparent the camera, I will see that it's 1.75 units from the ground. I just copy this value and add it in here. We need to be able to see how many uses we have left, so I will quickly add a UI text, move it to the top of the screen, increase its size and add it to my blink script. For the cam slot here, I can simply drag my camera. And layer mask, I will use the default layer mask because that's where my ground plane is. I'm going to split my layout so that I can see the scene and the game at the same time, then hit play. Alright, let's see. You may notice the line on the right screen starts at the camera location and ends on the controller's feet. Cool. Everything seems to be working perfectly. I'm going to add a wall on the center of the map real quick so you can see it's all working as intended. Yep, all Gucci. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful, subscribe and like the video so that I can continue to create more awesome game development content for you guys. Thank you for watching and have a good one, bye bye.